Item number three, rezoning application for 778 Fort Street. And council, I don't think we need a presentation. Um, does anyone think we need a presentation on this one or the next one? I mean, we'll treat them one at a time. Okay, so questions? Yeah, Councillor Isaac, go ahead with a question. Well, uh, good morning, staff. Sorry, good morning. Welcome. Thank you. I wonder, can staff just give a brief um, comment on public input received in relation to this specific application? In relation to 778 Fort? Yeah. Uh, we have not received any public input. And it's the position of the DRA um, on this issue that they're basically not weighing in on cannabis applications? The position of all the CALICs is that they they have waived the requirement for a CALIC, a CALIC pre-meeting. The, 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 primarily the details of each of these applications are relatively straightforward in terms of uh, particular use at a particular location and they feel that the, uh, uh, the public hearing process is sufficient to be able to provide uh, comment back to Council. We don't have any written correspondence from the CALUC on this one? Or? Ms. Meyer? There is, however, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have it directly in front of me. The DRE did provide a letter, although they're waiving the requirement for the Calhoun community meeting. Um, not, I would say, not in favor of the process in general. Not in particular about any application. And so no specific concerns to this 778 application? Yeah. The letter I referenced was to do with another application downtown, but it talked yeah. about the process. There's nothing in particular with this application from the okay. DRE. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, seeing none, um, could we have the motion presented? Thanks, staff, for your work on the application. Um, Council, would anyone like to move the staff recommendation? Uh, yeah, more questions. Go ahead. Uh, how many applications have we received for the downtown? Uh, for the downtown, I don't have that offhand. We've received, I think, 25 applications total. Um, yeah in the city as a whole. What, is there, are you able to provide a ballpark estimate of the number of applications in the downtown? Even within five or so? With just a minute, we'll be able to give you a ballpark. Great, Councilor thank Thornton you. and Joe may have some information too. Don't feel rushed, staff. Take your time. This is a workshop or committee meeting. I would ballpark around 10 applications. 10 in the downtown. Okay. Thank you. Would anyone like to move the staff recommendation? Okay. I'll move it so we get the Thank you. Moved by Councillor Coleman. Is there a seconder? Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Lucas. Discussion? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Coleman, do you want to speak as the mover? You don't, don't feel obligated, but I just. This, it's. It's a difficult process because of the changing landscape federally, locally, um, but we've laid out a process that we have asked people to be involved in. I think moving it forward to the public hearing to hear is absolutely fair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Lucas is a seconder. Anything? Councillor Isaac? I agree that I do want to hear from the public. Um, a question to staff. Um, if council wanted to revisit the whole buffer uh, requirement, potentially expanding it beyond the 200 meters, what would the appropriate way to be to do that? I know cherry picking a single application probably isn't the best way, so... Mr. Well, Tinney? The, um, the buffer is a policy. Uh, it doesn't sit within a, a bylaw correctly. So it is a policy that provides guidance to, um, uh, to staff. And so certainly a simple motion of council would be, uh, would be sufficient to, to revisit that. Probably to be fair with due notice, would it just be sort of a notice of motion to committee of the whole would be the cleanest approach or if a council member wished to proceed that way? Ms. Meyer? May I, through the mayor, offer some additional information? Yes. The, the poli part of the point of the policy is to guide staff and to guide council, but it's also what we use to give advice to applicants. And so we have given the advice to applicants within 200 meters, and as you know, we have 25 applications in. So to some degree, the effect of the policy has already taken place. We have told people, well, look 200 meters. 
Uh, if council wants to direct staff to revisit that, we certainly can. It would take some effort or council could just choose a different number. But we have accepted applications for 25 folks who have been told 200 meters. So again, on a case-by-case -case basis, council can certainly determine that, well, in this instance, really 200 meters is too small or it's too great. And it, it's fine for council to... Uh, consider a different number on an application by application basis. Sure, and I guess, yeah, my concern is like, does downtown become saturated? And I'm not the economist on council, Councillor Young is, but with the laws of supply and demand, I hope that over time um, that has an effect of weeding out um, whatever uh, enterprises may be approved through this process. But I, yeah, um, Mr. Tinney, I think. Thank you, you know. Mr. Tinney. Uh, certainly, and, and I think you know uh, part of the the value of this process for council. And I think uh, uh, Ms. Meyer was getting to, getting to this was that uh, the, the value of this process with the first uh, sort of a, a first in and and, and uh, consideration goes to the swiftest. Um, that that there is some fairness in terms of people moving through the process, and at such time as uh, you know a, a, some number of applications are approved in the downtown, it's it's perfectly legitimate for council to say we feel like we haven't we've approved enough of these within the downtown core. Th that said, I think it wouldn't be surprising to me that we would see a pro significant proportion of our. A uh, significant proportion of the applications coming to downtown, the vast majority of our commercial spaces where commercial activity is permitted is currently within the downtown core. So that's, I think, a certain something for, for council to consider. The other consideration is what are the impact? You know, one of the things that these, these uh, properties have been operating for a significant amount of time, and we, other than the process we're going through to bring them into compliance, they don't necessarily generate a significant amount of, of, of challenges on the, uh, uh, within the street. Again, the policy is there to provide for um, uh, not having them congregate a significant number of a portion on one block or in one particular uh, location. Um, and so I think it, as we go through and as we consider this, council has opportunities to change their, uh, to make further dis uh, decisions later on. But I think the key consideration is what is it that council is trying to achieve in terms of, of the policy? Is, is it a bigger buffer between individual properties or are we trying to limit the total number? And if council has, has some thoughts about what ultimately they want to achieve, certainly staff can provide some guidance on the best way to do that, the fairest way to do that given that we have a number of applications in process. And to answer your question, the process would just be sent, bring, us, bring a motion to next week's or some week's committee of the whole meeting for okay. discussion. Yeah, I support this motion. I think... Um, Generally, I think the law of supply and demand with some buffer is the way we would, should try to proceed. I wouldn't want to create a buffer so large that essentially having one of these licenses becomes a license to print money. So I think market forces are the best way to constrain the proliferation of these types of establishments in the community. I think in terms of nuisance impacts, that's more, I think, accomplished through signage and maintaining the prohibition on consumption of the product on site. So... Um, I think it's because it's very new that myself and maybe some other council members are reluctant. Looking at this particular address as well as the next one, I think we've dodged a bullet in the sense that they do, I think, have an adequate separation. So when we get applications that are budding right up against uh, the buffer of previously approved applications, that we might have some harder decisions to make. Thank you, Councillor Th Councilor Thornton, Joe, then Councillor Madoff. Uh, thank you. A, a couple of questions about the policy and the one specific to this uh, application. Uh, just in remembering the liquor policy, so we talked about um, the first in the door would be considered uh, first. With uh, liquor, th does it the same with liquor? If we had um, two liquor applications in, in the same, in, within a certain distance, uh, the one that we'd process first would be considered the first in the door, and we get consideration first. Is that? Is, is that similar to our liquor applications? That, that's how that was applied, yes. That's the basis under which we've, we've moved forward on the, the process and the recommendations for council in this case. Okay, and then my second question um, is, I notice on this application they have uh, sought out uh, input from their neighbors, which I, I was um, uh, impressed by and I think almost sets a new bar in in consultation with your neighbors it was is that anything in any of the writing uh, an expectation or is this something that the applicant chose to do on their own in any rezoning process staff do encourage applicants to consult the immediate neighbors and engage them in a dialogue so it's part of the rezoning process across the board 
Okay. And, and, and for me, I think this, uh, as I said, raises the bar and I think uh, leans me towards supporting more because they, they've made that effort. Um, uh, another question I have is a reminder that are, are applications allowed to be on second floors? Um, I thought I saw an application where I wasn't sure uh, from the sign whether it was for the ground floor uh, occupant or upstairs, and it didn't seem like the ground floor um, business was intending on going anywhere. Uh, to the chair, there's nothing preventing them uh, necessarily in the policy from going to the second floor. Um, generally, though, when I've brought these applications forward to council, I um, specifically stipulate that the bylaw will be created stating that it has to occur on the ground floor. Okay. I'm so there's, so all, uh, there's, there's nothing stopping a uh, dispensary yep. from being on the second floor, but all of the ones we've seen so far oh, okay. are on the first floor and the bylaw that we're proposing to adopt I, should the public hearing be okay. successful reflect that. So they can't, for example, open on the first floor and then decide to move to the second. The bylaw okay. doesn't allow for that. Does, does a sign that is indicated on a window have to indicate where on that property it's, it's located? No, the sign is just indicating that it's on the property, not exactly which unit it would have to be in. Okay, thank you. Um, I think uh, our our concerns have been expressed uh, several times, um, but uh, I will support this one going to public hearing, um, I th especially because it seems to have the support of the of the neighborhood. Thank you, Councilor Madoff. Thank you. In, in reflecting upon the hearing that we had for a dispensary on Lower Yates Street, it seemed more than in any other land use applications that we've been seeing that the emphasis on the part of the applicant and on the part of those who support the application is the operator versus the land use. And I'm wondering, are we making it very clear to folks that this is a land use issue? It's not based on the track record of the operator. I just found it was very graphic in that last one in particular about how they operate their business. So maybe at the beginning of a hearing even to explain that uh, so that f folks remember we're dealing with land use, not the, the, you know, the desirability of the operator. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that. Go ahead. Uh, to the chair, I do actually make that very clear. I've had a number of phone calls on several applications, um, some people commenting on how good um, one of the operators is, mm -hmm. sometimes not so good. Um, and I do make it very clear that from planning staff's perspective, we regulate the use, we not regulate the user. So perhaps at the beginning of, the, of a hearing, as we move forward, if that could just be a statement on, the, on behalf of the, the planning department would make, because it was a lot of confusion when it was really focusing on the yeah. operator. That's a really good idea. So staff, when you give your um, what we're considering tonight, really make that clear in these applications. Great. Thank you, Councillor Madoff. Great suggestion. Uh, Councillor Young on the motion. Um, well, yeah, as I've indicated before, I... I um, I have some concerns about the direction we're going here. So far, we've had an easy time of it because um, we're dealing with the ones that are first in the door. But um, before too long, we're going to have to start uh, refusing operators who may say they have been very good operators and may indeed have been um, because they're falling within this 200-meter um, uh, circle. Uh, it's still a long time until the federal government uh, has promised to uh, get all these regulations in order. Uh, by that time, we'll have, we'll have established a, a network of zonings and operators, um, all of whom have one thing in common. Uh, they've been operating illegally for a long period of time. And as a result of that, no operator who has decided to wait until marijuana is legal, will get a look in or will be recommended for approval uh, by our staff. Um, I, I think we are uh, letting us, ourselves in so for some real problems here. Thank you. Councillor Lucas? Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I understood um, Councillor Thornton Joe's question. Um, was she referring to liquor primary licenses or, or the licensed retail stores? Because I thought, or I do know, the liquor, liquor um, retail stores, the government determines, the provincial government determines how far apart we have to be. And you can't, I don't think you can allow somebody to go inside that, that rule by the provincial government.
So it's uh, the, the there, there are obviously provincial regulations that require those those boundaries, but the the, the city does have uh, has the ability if 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 uh, it so wishes to extend that boundary if if necessary. And so I'm not 100 percent sure whether they overlap, but my guess is they're probably somewhat similar. Um, and that provision is is applied to the, the the rezoning and the actual land use, which is different than the provincial authority to sell liquor, um, in order to provide for the the, the Distribution of some of those, uh, some of those uses throughout, and and and, and not having them congregating on, on individual individual blocks, which is a similar kind of direction that's uh, that, that's being utilized in this case. Okay, thank you. Um, so, if if the federal government comes down with their rules and they get set out and they say that you know they have to be four hundred uh, meters apart rather than two hundred, and we have people that are currently within the 400. How are we going to determine? I think this question has been asked before, but how are we going to fix that? Like currently with the licensed retail stores, some people got grandfathered because they didn't put the rule in until all afterwards. So the province grandfathered. But what, what are some of the things that we're going to be able to do to an existing store that is not in compliance? Will the federal government make that decision or will we make that decision? Uh, I, I can only speculate at this point. Um, I do know that the what we have seen from the federal government so far uh, largely relies to changes to the legality uh, of uh, of cannabis um, in terms of the, the 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 people who can can choose it. And my, our understanding is that they have relied on the they are relying on the provinces to actually undertake a regime around regulation. Um, and so that's uh, we, we're actually waiting not only for the changes to come through from the federal government, but also uh, some feeling from what the regulations may be at the provincial level. That said, you know, um, as best we can gauge, there will be some type of retailer, whether, whether it's a pharmacy, whether it's a liquor store, whether it's some standalone business, there will be some uh, operators who uh, will be selling cannabis uh, in through some, some sort of a retail type uh, storefront, in which case uh, at such time as that occurs, we will have sites zoned within the city that will permit that use to occur. If, those, if we have two of those uses that are too close to each other and the province or the feds or whoever ends up doing the regulation decides that they're too close to each other, ultimately all we have are two pieces of land use that are too close to each other and that becomes a decision of the province about which one gets to actually operate and which one doesn't. Um, the land use runs with the land. It is maintained as an, as an operating use. It provides for uh, spaces within the city for that activity to occur. We're doing a, undertaking our best judgment on how to apply that at this point. But uh, moving forward into the future, those will still be available for whatever form of, of retailing that, the, that this takes uh, in order to, to locate there with some understanding from the, from the city that, we're reasonably com that the council is reasonably comfortable with that use occurring in that location. Thank you. I've got a follow-up question. Again, every time one of these applications comes, we have a general policy discussion as well as a, general, a focused discussion on the application itself. But Councillor Lucas's question raised something for me, uh, and I generally prefer to deal with what is rather than what if. But um, you know, the province may decide to only allow cannabis to be sold in either pharmacies or liquor stores or both. So if that's the case, then what happens to the dispensaries that we've zoned? Do they just shut down and or become pharmacies or what Con conceivably the, they could uh, you know if they are no longer permitted to operate under provincial regulation then the province would step in and regulate the, okay. the, the, the ceasing of those operations those so that's something the province would do that's something the province Great. would do um, that said those spaces would still be those retail spaces would still be available with those uses attached and so if a pharmacy wanted to open up in one of those locations again council would have some comfort that that location is a place that that you are reasonably comfortable with cannabis being sold uh, in a retail basis Great, thank you. So in some ways we're behind and in other ways we're ahead. Um, any further discussion on this particular application? Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? One opposed. That carries. Thanks. Um, we move on to item number four, uh, 851 Johnson Street. Uh, similar re request. Um, yeah, question, Councillor Thornton-Joe. Uh, thank you. M my question to staff is, so according to the uh, map of the 200 meters, um, this application, there is one on Yates that has already been forwarded to public hearing. And is that showing that there is uh, two that are 
have applications in that haven't come to us where the stars are. One on Johnson and one on, I don't know where that is. Uh, Cormorant, I believe. Uh, yeah, we have received an application for the one on Cormorant, uh, but we have not received an application for the other one on Johnson. Okay, but, okay, thank you. Um, but the Yates Street one is already being forwarded to public hearing. Correct. So, uh, my question is, is in the first two applications we had on Yates Street, uh, I think the the staff came with a recommendation um, to withhold the second one within the 200 meters until the first one came through. Is that correct? And if so, uh, why is this one different? Uh, through the chair, that's correct. Um, I, we believe after review, there was a number of differences in those two applications. Uh, first, the policy does state that in the downtown area, a reduced distance may be warranted. Um, and we believe that this one and Yates Street, due to the fact that they are separated by a secondary arterial road, um, they are on different block faces. And if you were to walk between the two locations, they would be more than 200 meters apart. Um, that uh, allows for a reduced distance or for a recommendation for a reduced distance in this case. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, would anyone like to place, place the staff recommendation on the table? Okay, well, I, I will. Uh, count, thanks, Councillor Loveday moved all second. I think, uh, go ahead, do you want to speak as the mover? I, I, I think Councillor Coleman just put it really succinctly in the last application. We have a process. There's nothing, like no red flags that this shouldn't go forward to public hearing. So I know while well, no one wants to move these things, we've because of the awkwardness of it, we, we do have an obligation to respect the process that we've set out if we agree to that process. So I'm um, happy to put this on the table and, and really curious to hear what the public hearing will... Uh, We'll bring about um, further. Yes, Councillor Thornton Joe. Uh, this one, um, in, in some ways, uh, against again, I, I'm a little bit more supportive. Uh, bec if there is a one more support, not support uh, with all the conditions that we're looking at, in, in that this, I don't know if it's the whole building is owned by the applicant, but at least the lease part is owned by the whole lease part is owned by, I think, one ap applicant. And uh, the market and what uh, it sells seems to be more in uh, more congruent with with uh, uh, this operation. And I think if the the province were to go th uh, forward with a pharmacy, uh, this one seems to be the closest to uh, being near a pharmacy. But I, you know, when I look at all the applications that are coming through, uh, it, uh, I'm, although we look at uh, the, the council is approving it, I also have to acknowledge that there are that many. Uh, property owners that are willing to consider having uh, leasing their property to cannabis uh, dispensaries. So that's also interesting as well. But I think I can move to, uh, support this one. And to hear the comments, if any, um, that that will come before the public hearing. And I think we at times we have received emails uh, from individuals uh, regarding different applications. So hope the public will weigh in if they're, if they're interested. Thank you, Councillor Isaac, on the motion. Uh, I support the motion uh, in order to hear from the public. I do have a motion arising uh, from both this item and the next item. And I guess once this motion is voted on, I guess if the mayor can consider whether or not the motion would be in order. Sure, I will Subsequent do that. Motion. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? Thanks. One opposed. That carries. Councillor Isaac, let's try it. I, the only thing that might give me a pause is catching staff off guard, but go ahead. I've sent it to Council. It's a letter to the province to get information relating to several of the questions that have come up. Excellent. So Second. That, that Council <laughs> requests that the Mayor, on behalf of Council, write to the Solicitor General of British Columbia requesting the province indicate to the City of Victoria as soon as possible when it anticipates publishing draft regulations and legislation relating to the distribution, regulation, and taxation of cannabis in British Columbia in accordance with the provisions of Federal Bill C-45, the proposed Cannabis Act. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Isaac, seconded by myself. Any discussion? And, and so specifically, Go the question ahead. is when can we expect to see those drafts? If it's this summer, I think industry would be happy to hear that, obviously members of the public, and maybe this will help invite a discussion, which... I would anticipate or I would guess they're probably already reaching out to our staff, given the very specialized work that Victoria and Vancouver have undertaken, but it will help spur that along. Sure, thanks. On that note, I'd like to make an amendment. Um, I can go right at the end. And that uh, the city, the, the, that council or that the mayor, let's say, and that the mayor request uh, that the province work with city of Victoria staff uh, on this 
on this issue. Okay, moved, amendment moved by me, seconded by Councillor Isaac. All those in favor of the amendment? Any opposed? Thanks. Um, all those in favor of the main motion? Any opposed? Thanks. Great one, Councillor Isaac. Thank you for that. Thank you, staff, for your continued work, and we'll look forward to seeing these come forward to public hearing. Uh, earlier in the morning when we approved the agenda, we uh, dispensed with item number five, land use contract termination phase one, and item number six, rezoning application with regard to signage uh, for... Dallas Road, 